Hello again, everyone. Today I'm excited to share some fun, interesting primary sources about ways people entertained themselves in the 19th century. Even though today's children and adults are seemingly glued to their devices, there are some remnants of traditional forms of entertainment. Most people have played all or some of these games, telephone, Simon Says, and fortune-telling games like Cootie Catchers. Before devices and board game companies inundated Americans with various avenues of diversion, books were published with different types of games to keep groups entertained. In this presentation, we'll look at two such books, including word games similar to Telephone, the rules of the actual game Simon Says from 1858, and the same, um, which is the same as what we play today, and a fortune-telling game similar to those found in Cootie Catchers um, and Magic 8-Balls. The first of the books I'll be talking about today, the primary sources that might spice up a course, is, and I'm going to struggle to say it, Aldi Boron to Fosky for Neostikos, a round game for merry parties. This is a Christmas game, um, and it was published in 1858 with instructions that require uh, each member of the party to read a letter of the alphabet. And the story builds and builds and is, is inundated with these hard-to-read words. So, for example, the first player reads A and B. Aldi Boron to Fosky Forniosticos, B, Bombardinian, but Bashaw of Three Tales, who killed Aldi Boron to Fosky Forniosticos. Obviously, they're hard to say. When you mess it up, you're out. The story builds using imagery that's evocative of the gift of the Magi, the travels, all of those kinds of Christmas things mixed with more circus like imagery, very Victorian in nature. And, for example, this one is M, Muli Hassan Mufti of Moldavia, put on his barnacles, and it continues. Eventually, the party would get to Z, here the spell ceased, and each in his own form scampered away to claim the reward. So off set X and Y, Willy Widemouth of Wolverhampton, umpo vumpo, and it keeps going, until all the way back to that really tough to say word, Aldi Boron to Fosky for Neostikos. This might be really fun to actually try in a class, if it was a small enough class, um, to sort of emulate some of the pop culture of the, of the period you're studying. In addition to Christmas books, there was also a very popular 1001 game book, which included Simon Says. I was pleasantly surprised. Most of us have played it, and I didn't know it dated back to 1858 and probably even further. So this has the instructions, and if you've never played Simon Says, Simon leads the group saying, Simon says, thumbs up. Simon says, thumbs down. Simon says, thumbs up. Thumbs down. Whoever puts their thumbs down is out. Um, this might be also easy to do in a classroom to recognize that the things that we do today, the things that are part of our own culture, came from this legacy. Similar to the cootie catchers that we played with in the 90s, this game involves closing one's eyes, uh, placing the finger on a card to seek an answer to a question. The number you're on correlates with a fortune. Some of the fortunes might be funnier than others, particularly the idea that somebody who's married might get one that says they want to get married, or you might uh, find a faux fortune that you're going to be confronted with a lawsuit, that you might win a prize, that you might attend a christening that uh, you'll get pleasant intelligence from abroad or marry in haste and repent at leisure. So these are kind of funny things and when you think about the way we watch TV today it's kind of interesting to think this is how people may have filled their evenings or their parties but it's definitely fun to sort of step into the shoes and examine pop culture.